As a teenager, a long, long time ago, I had the lifelong benefit of attending an excellent Catholic high school conducted by the Irish Christian Brothers. St. Lawrence was a prep school. If you weren't going on to college, you were flunked out by the end of your sophomore year. The religious brothers were mostly of Irish descent, but the students like me were mostly of Polish descent. It was a strict school with a leather strap, believe it or not, hanging underneath the statue of the Blessed Mother in each and every classroom. And the brothers never hesitated to use that strap in order to reinforce a lesson, be it academic, moral, personal, or social. But in those days, you got swats from brother at school, you never complained about it to your parents at home. Our dads were all working men who saw no reason whatsoever for their sons to waste hard-earned tuition money by messing around in school. But for all that discipline, St. Lawrence was basically great place, and for me, an enjoyable place. At that stage of adolescence, most of us, most of the time, preferred being at school with friends than at home with family. We spent a lot of time involved in all sorts of activities, and frankly, the quality of education was simply excellent. We learned languages. We learned math and science. We learned the traditions of our Catholic faith. We studied history, government, English composition. But we also learned something that helped us for the rest of our academic lives. Namely, we learned how to take a test and how to do well on the exam. We were drilled and well prepared even to excel on the SAPs, the Scholastic Aptitude Test, that would be our ticket into a good college or university. I remember that the brothers always emphasized that whenever you were taking a test, first try to understand the question once you figured out what was actually being asked, only then could you give the right answer. Learning that skill of first understanding what is being asked, that only got me into the University of Notre Dame, and more importantly, it got me through the University of Notre Dame. In an exam, indeed in much of our lives, we must first grasp what is important, what is essential, what is vital and necessary. Then let go of what really doesn't count. In today's first reading, in the first book of Kings, we encounter the awesome prophet Elijah and are given a lesson on priorities. Elijah was God's fiery messenger sent to the kingdom of Israel, Elijah confronted the entire nation with what were the essential truths of their religion. He opposed King Ahab and his wicked wife, Queen Jezebel. The royal family wanted the people to blend in with all the other nations rather than stand out as God's holy people. Elijah single-handedly opposed the cultural and religious assimilation. He slaughtered all the pagan priests of Baal 
and energetically taught the people the core lessons of the Torah, of God's law. And in today's reading, he calls Elisha to be his disciple, his student, his prophet in training to eventually take his place. But Elisha, chosen by God, personally called by the prophet Elijah, loses sight for a moment of what was necessary. Is it anything in this world to be more important than one's answer to God? And the urgency of God's command and the priority of God's will. Elisha equivocates. He doesn't keep his eye on the ball. Invited by the master of the universe to take Elijah's place, Elisha presumes that other things might be more important. Let me go home first and kiss Dad, then say goodbye to Mom. You know, in a certain way, the venerable servant of God, Fulton whose remains are now with us, and appropriately entombed in this cathedral, he faced a similar test in his life. When he finished college, Sheen was offered a very special academic scholarship that would have paid his way for further studies in any of the great universities of America. His choice. He already knew he had a vocation to the priesthood, but he was still tempted first earn a further degree, and only later enter the seminary. But a priest he really trusted challenged him to answer God's call first, and only then go on to earn additional degrees. And thanks be to God, that is exactly what the servant of God, Fulton James Sheen, did. A not dissimilar testing is described in today's gospel. Jesus, the Messiah, calls some people to follow him. They were potential disciples. Remember, the word disciple actually means student. But these students of Christ didn't understand the dramatic challenge of the Lord's invitation. And they begin to give the wrong answers. One wants to first go home and bury his father. Another wants some time off to say goodbye to his family. But Jesus, the teacher, teaches, let the dead bury the dead. And then he declares, anyone who has once set a hand to the plow and looks back is not fit to enter the kingdom of God. When personally invited by God to become a disciple, even the most important mitzvah or good deed, namely of burying the dead, namely of burying one's own father, even this most sacred responsibility of any pious Jewish son, even this becomes secondary to the awesome opportunity to become the Lord's disciple and proclaim the kingdom. Now, today's scriptures, we are not being called to impiety, to neglect parents or family, or of our religious responsibilities to the dead. But rather, we are being challenged to put first things first, to see what is essential in the school of Christ, and to begin to understand God's radical questions then give the right answers. The truth is, if we ever really allow God to be God in our lives, to let Jesus be our Lord and teacher, all our ambitions and responsibilities would finally fall into their proper place. If only we could learn to understand what is truly important, and give the correct answers to God, we would be better sons and daughters, better husbands and wives, better parents, better at our jobs, better at fully living our lives. We could 
let go of the mistake of placing divine expectations on fallible human beings. We could escape the grief of misdirecting our infinite desires towards realities that are only finite. As St. Paul teaches us in today's second reading, faith in Jesus should truly set us free. We should be guided by His Spirit and not be ruled by self-absorption. You know, every single Mass in a certain way is a kind of test, a kind of exam about our faith in God. At Mass, we are able to hear we are asked in all sorts of ways to hear God's questions. After the scriptures are read, we are asked to give our answer to the word of God by saying words that shouldn't just be ritual. Thanks be to God, or praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we do believe in your teaching. God, we will try to live according to your scriptures. Yet at the end of the Eucharistic prayer, the priest chants out that it's only through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and praise is given to God the Father. And we are asked, invited to say, Amen. I agree, it's true. I really know the right answer. And at Holy Communion, once again, we are questioned the minister of the sacrament says, the body of Christ, we should respond with faith. Amen. I believe, so be it, it is true. These questions and these answers are much more important than all the other examinations we might have to face in this passing world. The rewards of this testing by God are endlessly greater than anything else we may now know or even begin to understand in lives on this earth which are bounded by birth and death. Giving the right answers about loving God and neighbor gives meaning and significance to all attentive students of Christ. And in the world to come, our right answers will enable us to see God face to face in a paradise without end, sharing in the measureless bliss of communion with God and with one another. So, dear fellow believers, so lifelong disciples, that is, lifelong students of Christ. May we all learn to better understand God's questions and then to give the right answers when God calls us by name.